let's cover the company setup options. I'm going to go to setup slash utilities at the top of the screen here, the tab for that. Then I'm going to go to company setup. And on this first screen that opens up here, this is where when I first purchased the software, I put in my company name, my address, phone information, email, website on the left side here. Also on the right hand side at the top right, I put in my registration information, the product type, registration ID. At that point, I would hit process registration to finalize the registration. The address information can be edited at any time. So if you get a street address change or a phone number change, that type of information can be edited. The items on this screen that cannot be changed without contacting Imagine Time Tech Support are the company name, the registration information in the box here, product type and registration ID. Changing any of this information will unregister the software, can end up getting you locked out of your data file. And I'll give you an example here. There is a warning when you click in these fields, you get this pop-up warning you not to make changes without consulting Imagine Time technical support. So make sure and do that, please. Also on this screen, there is a button here for inner alternate billing locations. Uh, we have an add-in feature that allows you to have uh, two billing addresses, if you will, for your clients. Uh, and basically what that allows you to do is by client, you can choose which address information is going to print at the top of the invoice. So the um, address for them to send a payment to, basically, if you will. Uh, so a good example is I have an office in City A and City B. So for the clients that I deal through in Office B, I can have that office address at the top of their invoice. There are also some buttons at the far right here. Uh, we'll cover the import client setup data a little bit more toward the end of this video, but there's also a setup legal ABA work codes. If you are a legal firm using our software, those are the American Bar Association work codes, and that will replace the um, sample work codes that we have in the database by default, which are the um, accounting work codes. But that is the main screen here. There's also an options tab and here at the top left, if you have any of the add-in modules, you can unlock those modules. There's some security and permission settings, uh, credits and payments information, how those get applied, that type of thing. At the, on the right hand side here, you can select whether your billing increment is in quarter hours, tenths of an hour or hundredths of an hour. Uh, there's some other options here if you want to use uh, military time on the time entry. Uh, several options here for how you want behavior of the program. If you want to search by ID instead of name and activate spell check button if you want to um, auto spell check time entries. Several options here. I do have set service charge on for new clients. On the right hand side here, I do have um, also show next ID button so that I can let the program auto create client IDs for me. And I'm going to set the use client ID for group ID by default if I don't specify a group ID. And I also have it set to use the enhanced due date system from client contact screen uh, if I have the due date and workflow management modules. There's some other options here for how engagements are handled. And you can change some of the color scheme in the program here if you want to. I did want to cover a couple of settings on this screen that only affect staff level users, staff level permission users. And that is on the left hand side of the screen here, there is an option to hide staff rates from staff permission level when they're entering their time on the time entry screens and on time reports so that they won't see uh, billable amounts or rate information. Also on the right hand side of the screen, there is an option here to limit the number of days that a time entry can be edited or deleted once it has been entered in the system. There is a drop down for the number of days you want them to be able to edit slips or delete slips. 
you have two options there actually. You can do it by the number of days from the date it was created, or you can put in a date here. And in that case, that is a hard cutoff date. So that, you know, at the end of this month or the beginning of next month, I could put in the end of this month's date. And that would mean any time entries dated on or before that would be non-editable by staff level users. Just a couple of things on staff level security there. There is a tab here for lookup list. And here, uh, the main things here at the bottom left are expense types. You can specify expense types here. If you had uh, a good example here would be like if you had copy services and I could set up CPY for copy and and maybe I charge um, a fee of 25 cent per copy. And now when I enter that expense type, it will ask me for the quantity and it will calculate the extension for me automatically. Uh, the other main thing that you're going to use on this screen is in the center top here, there's other choose table. There's quite a few tables here that you can get to. Um, a good example would be address descriptions. And here are the ones that are in the program by default. Maybe I have a practice that's near a lake. I have a lot of clients that have lake houses. So I need lake house as one of the types. I can add that to the list there. And again, there's quite a few you can get to here. Would review, you know, payment types, that type thing. I would suggest that you review this. Also on the client setup screen, there's some user defined fields. These are the names that are given to those by default. You can modify those here. And that's on the more contact information screen from the client setup. There's also uh, closing counters. This is really used for tech support uh, if you've got them on the line. Rate templates here. You can set up rate templates here and assign them to clients. Uh, templates can be either uh, client rate templates for all work codes. You know, a good example would be I've got a client that I charge a flat fee regardless of the type of work they're doing for him. Uh, work code rate templates and uh, that will allow me to specify by work code what rate gets charged for all clients. And there's also a combination of that where I have client and work code templates uh, that allows me to set up templates that are for specific work codes for specific clients or client groups too. And the templates can be set up here. I'm going to close that. Record locking again is for technical support credit cards, email attachments. If you're using go to billing for credit card processing through Imagine Time, you put in your go to billing account information here and here uh, that gets used for processing credit cards in the program. Also at the bottom here of the screen, you can select a path uh, where your PDFs get saved if you're emailing invoices and statements to clients. One other thing I will mention on the company info screen is that there is an option here to import client setup data. And that does that gets you to this screen. Actually, from this screen, if you hit F1 on your keyboard, it'll get you into the help about this screen. Basically, what it will do is build a blank Excel spreadsheet for you. You can populate that spreadsheet with your client information, then read it into the database. So it can save you a lot of typing time. But basic name, address, phone number, AR balance, whip balance, expense balance, that type of thing can be imported through that. And like I said, there's very detailed descriptions in the help menu. Anywhere in the program, hit the F1 key for help about the screen that you're currently on. But that covers the setup of the company information and your basic options.